It's Mike Quackenbush, and today I've picked out a match that is very special to me because it is my favorite of the matches I've had with Colt Cabana. Colt is a real master of the mat. He's one of a handful of guys like Zack Sabre Jr. or Johnny Kidd, Johnny Saint, Claudio Castagnoli. When you're in the ring with someone like a Colt Cabana, you know that you can cut loose. And like a lot of my very favorite opponents, the likes of which are Shane Hawk, 3.0, and the reckless youth Tom Carter himself, we always have a smile on our face when we are in the ring because we're making each other laugh and we are enjoying every moment of trading holds together in the ring. It's one of the things I love most about wrestling Colt and it's one of the things I love most about this match from the Logan Square Auditorium in Chicago, Illinois. There's the bell, we're off and running, and it is my pleasure to not only be here to commentate this match, but also to be here at the commentation station with one, the only, Dasher Hatfield. Thank you for joining me. Hello, 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 Mr. Chakorison, and hello, people at home. I hope you're sitting at home are as excited as I am to be watching two of the greatest at what they do, walking around that square circle right now. To talk about these two men in the ring, Lightning Mike Quackenbush in the blue and black, Hulk Cabana Boom Boom in the red and black, these two men, no strangers to each other, whether you just go back a few months to August of this year in Wisconsin, these two locked up. Mike Quackenbush was victorious there. But you can even go all the way back to the very first Chikara show back in May of 2002. These men were on opposite sides of a six-person tag. And here we are now, some 10 plus years later, and there are no two men I would rather watch wrestle here in Chicago. I'll tell you what, I was as, ex as excited as a little boy once again when I saw my name on the commentary list for this matchup. Normally I have to stand back there and count the touchdowns, push-ups, make sure he's doing his jumping jacks and getting ready, but I get this chance to come watch Lightning Mike Quackenbush, my trainer, and Cole Cabana, a man I've been in the ring with, and know just how good he is, come out here and do battle in front of this amazing crowd in Chicago, Illinois. And folks, if you've never seen these two men compete, and folks, if this is your first Chikara DVD, lucky you, this is a winner. They're all winners. DVD, MP4, what may have you. But you were going to see a little bit of a different style out of Colt Cabana and Lightning Mike Quackenbush here in this contest. To say the least, you're going to see moves and holds you've never seen before. Reversals that I didn't even know were humanly possible. These men, the tricks they have up their sleeve, are like no magician has ever seen before or done before. Nope. Again, a little bit of the British Lancaster style, a little bit of the American Oh, not so fast, Colt Cabana. He thought he got out of the head scissors there, and you see Cabana. Cabana, an obvious strength advantage over one Mike Quackenbush. But this matchup is still going to go to the man who's on top of his game today. And right now, it's Colt Cabana. 
We mentioned Quack's got the strength, or uh, Command has got the strength advantage. Quack has definitely got the quickness advantage. Possibly the most technically proficient wrestler in all the world in Lightning by Quackenbush. But both of these men are very similar, both in the ring, as you're seeing here. A lot of these interesting and unique counters, as Dasher mentioned before. But even outside of the ring, a lot of the same uh, sensibilities. And very nicely done with a nip up there by Lightning Mike Quackenbush. That was pretty, folks. It's hot down there. <laughs> the competitiveness between these two men is the competitiveness I've never seen in all my years of being an athlete. Right, and it's not anger that you see between Absolutely these. Absolutely not. There's a little bit of one-upmanship, of course. You know, you've maybe seen from our website, JakarPro.com. Quack has had some unkind words for some of the members of the Gekito, but none such for Colt Cabana. These two men have a lot of respect for him. As you see Quack there, kind of like sticking his chin out here, asking Cabana to hit him. I don't know what he's... Oh, and the crowd seems to think that my Clark and Bush wants a little kiss. Oh, no! Clark and Bush too smart. Arm ringer and a beauty. You know, I think that could be Cabana's downfall. I've never seen him give up the opportunity for a kiss. He's still looking for it. Don't tempt him with a good time, Leonard Chakarison. <laughs> Quack and Bush still has the hold there as Cabana mares him over. Great hand strength, grip, traction, whatever you want to call it by Cabana. And the double boots finally gets the wrist lock off. And Quackenbush is in a foot bus. And as you see there, Cabana holding onto his own legs, not only possibly to add some pressure to this, but also to keep his shoulders off the canvas. This would be a horrible way for this match to end. And you see Bryce Rep strength advantage from Colt Cabana. Quackenbush tried to pry those feet off. Not today, Mike Quackenbush. And you see Cabana doing his best not only to keep the hold, but also to keep his shoulders off the canvas. Bryce, his eye both on the mat to make sure Cabana is not in a pinning predicament, but also to make sure that Quackenbush does not give up. Oh, oh, that didn't feel good. And you saw Quack trying to use some leverage there to try to rock Cabana back onto his shoulders in the hopes to get Cabana to release the hold. Instead, Cabana slaps his own thighs, muscular thighs at that. <laughs> to put some pressure back on Quack and Bush. Bryce right there, only two. What would you call this style here, Carson? Like an element. Again, there's uh, elements of the British Lancaster style. Uh, Quackenbush implements a lot of the Japanese and Mexican style. Cabana will be the first to tell you he is American tried and true. I'm sure he would call himself a Chicago pro, Chicago native, a bike rider, a taxpayer, a podcaster. A man of many hats. Like yes, myself. indeed. I have all kinds of hats. I have a Reds hat and an Astros hat. I have a Rangers hat. I have a Throwbacks hat. No Cleveland hat? I have a Marlins hat because that's my team. I have a, I do have an Indians hat. Whoa! That's a no! Into the pin! One, two, what? I can't even keep up with this, folks. These two men are truly amazing. Outstanding and phenomenal. And Dasher, you mentioned about the strength advantage of Cabana. I mentioned the quickness of Mike Quackenbush, and you saw it there. As soon as Quack was starting to get the ball rolling and getting momentum going in his uh, in his way for this match, Cabana immediately got away from Quackenbush, went to the corner to stop that momentum. Very I'm not sure strong. Mike Quackenbush knows exactly what happened there. He knew he had him, and then he didn't. Spins him around, takes him over by both wrists. Oh, there's that strength. But Quackenbush got him locked up. That's right, Cabana thought he had control of this one, but Quack had a death grip around those mammoth thighs of Cabana. Rolls him up, one, two. Oh, but he hangs on to the ankle. Check that out, Carson. Oh! Business is starting to pick up. I was about to say, it looks like playtime's over here as Quack is just putting the torque on the ankle of Colt Cabana. Cabana trying to kick Quack and Bush off, trying to keep his shoulders off the canvas. And now an innovative way to really add some pressure to that ankle. We haven't touched on yet this yet, Carson, but I wonder if having the home field advantage is going to come into play for one Colt Cabana today. These fans, standing ovation for the man, and all he had to do was make his way down the entrance. Hometown boys are more of a split, a split crowd when we were in Wisconsin just two and a half, three months ago. But right here, Cabana is the favorite son of Chicago. 
Both men seem to have a submission maneuver on Puckett's his hand back. Bit of a figure Ooh. four that Quackenbush had there and continues the assault on the ankle of Colt Cabana. Does lightning by Quackenbush. I think Cabana needs to pull one of those tricks out of his hat and he needs to do it quick, folks, or he's going to find himself on the losing end of this contest. And I know he's not going to be too happy about that move. And you see Cabana holding on to his own foot, hoping to alleviate keep some of that pressure away. It looked like Cabana might have been blowing in Quackenbush's ear. That is a unique way to get out of a hold. You know, I've always wondered in holds like that, why a guy never does something like that, blow in their ear, give him a wet willy, or maybe tickle him. Sometimes you gotta do whatever works, Shakaris, and that's for sure. And I've read the rule books, and nowhere in there does it say you cannot blow in the man's ear. Whoa! Oh! Quackenbush was lucky, I thought that was it. Irish whip, weave through. Got him by the head. And a suplex. Snap suplex, nice with the bridge, but still holds on inside cradle. This could be it. Good. Still got a hold of the wrist. He is not letting this man go. Of all the moves I thought we would see in this match, suplex was not one of them. Again, both these men you know so many styles, so many styles that they are so proficient in. And just like that, Cabana takes control of it. You see him trying to shake a little bit of the feeling back into the ankle, into the foot, and really putting the pressure. You know, he must know about the injured, the injury that Quackenbush had earlier this year, just this past March. That what? wrist was almost destroyed by Gakito member 17. What is Quackenbush gonna do? A jump to the ground, takes him over. Seat belt and a pinning combination. Woohoo! Adam stacked up, folks. Thank you for following along. We're doing our best to keep up with the action, but sometimes it's difficult. And sometimes you just gotta let the action speak for itself. Whoa! And that's it! Just like that, Cabana catches him with the weight advantage. And it's one to one, folks. Mike Quackenbush won. Go Cabana won. Oh, I'm dying for a tiebreaker.